from Ryan O. <clears throat> Trade for Cam Bright. Uh, yelling aside, I would actually strongly explore this move. When we broke down Blake Jarwin replacements, it's available on the channel. Just type it in or just look through the recent videos. You'll find it. Cameron Braid, I think, makes a lot of sense for this team. The Bucks did not use him that much. He's their third tight end. He's a little bit expensive, but he'd give you the seam stretcher I think the Cowboys need right now at tight end. Dominique Jackson, what do you think we can get in a trade for Demarcus Lawrence? He's been missing for over a year. He's not been missing. Now, I know you guys want more sacks out of Demarcus Lawrence, and that is fair. I get that. But if you choose to only evaluate a player based on sacks, you're, good, you're doing it wrong. Demarcus Lawrence gets a lot of hurries, gets a lot of pressures, faces a lot of different double teams. And for example, third down against the Rams. Pretty sure it was third down. Demarcus Lawrence, the ball came out too quick, did not get a sack. But he batted it down. He forced a, a fourth down play. Isn't that just as good as a sack? Those types of plays Tank's been making. Now, don't get me wrong. I want more sacks. And if he puts up five sacks again this year, and th if the pressure rate drops again, I will be concerned. But I'm not panicking on Tank after one game. I think he's going to put up double-digit sacks this year and continue to be your best run stopper as he was against, again against the Rams and continue to free up other players as well. D-Lunatic, McCarthy Rogers on pre-snap motion, where are you? Uh, this was a, a quote that came out from Rogers who said, you know, early on he didn't like motion and McCarthy didn't like motion. And McCarthy also said today that he doesn't want to do empty motion and just do it for no reason. Um, I actually think there are times when empty motion does work because it helps you identify man versus zone in theory. So I am a little bit worried about it. I think pre-snap motion helps. I would love to see more motion. They did use it at times, but it was a significant drop from what we saw early last year to week one. Based on the numbers I've charted, it was they were they ran pre-snap motion like over half the time first six weeks last year because that's the only time I charted it, and then sub 45% this week. So that would be a McCarthy influence. That does worry me a little bit. From King J., this is an Earl Thomas game. All right, first off, uh, James, give me that beer. Still have the rule. I drink every time there's an Earl Thomas question. We're still going to do that. Uh, we'll see how Darian Thompson does against Atlanta. Guys, I am not convinced it ever changes in terms of Earl Thomas. There's a chance, yes. It might be a safety week, sure, but they also signed Brandon Carr, remember. So... I am not convinced this is suddenly an Earl Thomas game. It might not actually end up working out that way. So here's the beer. Uh, was it me or the defense look like 2019 as far as the bad tackling goes? Yeah, the, the team looked the same. That's concerning. Thanks for the beer, my friend. All right, Viva LeBlaine. Who is the worst starter that isn't a punter? Okay, good question. Uh, it is Chris Jones, by the way, just so we're clear. If you take it only on week one, the two worst starters in that game, offensively, Connor Williams slash Dalton Schultz now. Defensively, Jalen Smith. If you view the overall team, of course factoring in week one, I think it's Darian Thompson at safety, and it's Dalton Schultz right now at tight end, which would not have been the case had Blake Jarman been healthy. It would have been Connor Williams, which isn't the end of the world because He's been an average player across his NFL career. But right now, Dalton Schultz at tight end, Darian Thompson at safety. Now, we will continue to provide you guys with daily Cowboys videos, sometimes even multiple times a day. So if you want that, if you want constant updates on the Dallas Cowboys, good updates as well. I'm not going to put out just ridiculous takes for you guys. We'll, we'll tell you how it is. Subscribe today. Hit that big red button. Join the most watched and the most subscribed Cowboys YouTube channel out there. We're going to get to 69K, and I cannot wait. I am fired up about that one. So subscribe right now if you are a true Cowboys fan. Get some shout-outs here as well to those of you who I know are subscribed. I see a real Cowboys fan, Rashard Lee, as well. Thank you all very much. From Cuba Cowboys, why don't we use more trick plays? Um... I would like more misdirection. Trick plays don't always work, but I would love to utilize more of what the Rams did. Using all of this pre-snap motion, getting guys going left, getting guys going right. That works. 
I would love to utilize more of that. I know those plays exist in the playbook. We saw one of the CD Lamb jet motion swing. I want to see more of that. It exists. I know that it does. We'll see if it ends up being utilized more, but I know that play is in the Cowboys playbook. From Kajla Campbell, uh, I think we should draft a tight end in this upcoming draft. At minimum, you should draft a new backup because I don't think Dalton Schultz is it. Blake Bell ain't it either. Should they spend their first round pick on a tight end? We'll see what the board looks like. But yes, I say absolutely draft a tight end at some point this upcoming draft. From King J, sign Eric Reed or Vontez Burfitt to play linebacker. Uh, first off, Vontez Burfitt's dirty. He's not that good at football anymore. So I, I don't want him. Todd Davis, if you want to go explore a linebacker in terms of off-ball guys. Eric Reed, though, look, I've wanted Eric Reed for months now. He can play strong. See if he can play linebacker. I'm all for it. Like, I think that is a good path for the Cowboys. So I say, yes, sign Eric Reed. Kilgore wants me to drink, just says Earl Thomas question mark. I mean, sure. It's fine. I, I, if you want to go get him, okay. If you trust him off the field. Clearly, the Cowboys don't. If they lose week two and week three, maybe they panic. Maybe at that point they... they Make a big-time move. From Dominic Lizcano, why don't we use Pollard more? The NBC commentator said he has a big impact given the little role he, he is given. Yes, he does make an impact. Now, there is some efficiency stuff there, but that would dip with more usage, but that's okay. That's how it works. The issue was that, is Tony Pollard better than Zeke? The answer is no. Is he better in the passing game than... C.D. Lamb or Amari Cooper or Michael Gallup. No, he was not better than Blake Jarwin. So in reality, I kind of viewed Pollard as your sixth best offensive playmaker piece. You can utilize him in Zeke on the field more. I want the Cowboys to do that, especially with Blake Jarwin now out. But because Pollard's not as good as Zeke, there is going to be a limited role for him. But yeah, I would like to get him more involved in the offense, especially with Blake Jarwin out for the year now. Allen Williams. How do we fix our linebacking core? It is the main reason why we lost. Is the main reason we lost week one because of it? Might be a dumb question. Um, I think that there were a lot of reasons why the Cowboys lost week one. I do think linebacker play is up there. I was against going an early round draft pick at linebacker for two reasons from this past draft. A, you had Jalen, LVE, Sean Lee, Joe Thomas at the time all healthy. You can't be spending early round picks on insurance policies. At this point, however, Sean Lee is probably in his last year. His career is probably over after this. LVE is hurt again. I am concerned. So I think in terms of fixing the linebacker core, I mean, unless you can get like a Miles Jack cheap in a trade, you're probably going to look towards the draft. However, don't spend a premium pick. You can find good off-ball linebackers in round two, in round three, in round four. I would rather invest in particular in a legit impact defensive tackle because that is still missing from this team. From my fake burner account, how much does a lack of an offseason attribute to a week one loss seems teams with a new coaching staff were added a disadvantage? I don't want to use it as an excuse, but I think it absolutely factored in. I, I think that this is a, a, you didn't have the, you know, getting the early jitters out for the coaching staff. You didn't have the, the reps and all that. I think it definitely mattered. It's not an excuse. I think it is an impact. I don't think it's the main reason why they lost. I think it is a reason, but it was pretty common across the NFL. New coaching staffs didn't fare that well. Then again, most teams with new coaching staffs are bad. That's just, why else would you need, need a new coaching staff, right? So a factor, absolutely. I think there was certainly some rust, but every NFL team dealt with it. So I think it is in a contributing factor, certainly not the contributing factor. Now, if you're going to a Cowboys game this year, as I'm sure some of you will, as a reminder, you will be required to wear a mask and keep it on during the game. These are the masks that the coaches will sometimes wear on the sidelines. You might see a handful of players, other assistants as well. These are the official sideline masks. If you want one, they're super high quality, head over to chatsports.com slash Cowboys 
mask. That is chatsports.com slash Cowboys mask. I'll put that link in the comments and I will put it in the description. From Delunatic, Kellen Moore play calling worry level, 1 to 10. I didn't love the game plan the Cowboys put together, especially in the second half. They got real conserved when they did not need to. I think that the overarching thought and plan process was, though, shoot, we don't have Lael Collins. We have an undrafted rookie at right tackle, and we have Aaron Donald on, on the opposing sideline. Let's utilize runs, quick passes, all of that. Let's not take shots deep downfield. Didn't work out as well. The one time they did, it was called back for, I'm going to call BS pass interference and, and or offensive pass interference. So I'm not going to panic on Kellen Moore after one game. I need to see a bigger data set. But I'd say it's at like a two or a three right now, at minimum, if not a four. From Cuba Cowboys, thank you, my friend, for this super chat. Why don't they use Dax? I think you mean running game more. Um... I just think they don't want him to take hits. I, I think it's an injury concern thing. I would like to see Dak run more, especially in the red zone. We saw it work out third and 13 or 12 late in the game. He tucked and run, worked out well, trying to get that first down, almost did. I would like to see at least a handful of it used in each game. From Dakota Gearhart, they looked flat slash no energy. Yeah, the, the concerning thing there is that that's what we said last season. And if the new coaching staff doesn't get things fixed, maybe you have to blow, to blow the whole thing up. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. But week two, borderline must-win game, I need the Cowboys to wake up and play better across the board against the Atlanta Falcons. So predict the Cowboys' record for me. What are they going to be this year? Are they going to win one game? Are they going to win 10 games? Are they going to be somewhere in the middle, 11 games? You can't win 16, of course, right now. So... What will be the Cowboys' record this season? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. From Jay Becker, is that how you pronounce your last name? Sorry if it's not, my friend. I think we need to scheme to uh, scheme more blitz plays. We need to utilize CeeDee Lamb, Tony Pollard. Those guys are playmakers. Zeke's a monster. How are we messing this up? Well, the problem was blitz plays against the Rams, they killed you on them because they ran screens and they used misdirection and motion. Screens can get beat if you can, or blitz can get beat if you get the ball out quickly, or if you are if you are running screen plays because they get sucked in. That's what the Rams did. So the Rams game plan I thought was brilliant. It worked to, to perfection. I do want to utilize C.D. Lamb more. You can give Tony Pollard a few more touches. They are playmakers. It is a too many mouths to feed thing because all five of your guys, with Pollard included, I think he's the worst of the group, are legit playmakers. The offensive line does not hold up it, its end of the bargain. This offense overall should still be great this year. I'm not panicking quite yet on that front. From T. Patter, Des Bryant at tight end. No. Des Bryant is not going to be an inline tight end. Folks, I'm going to emphasize this again as we did in the offseason. You are not going to take Des Bryant, going to turn 32 this year, and say, okay, Des, inline tight end. He, he's going to suck in that role. He's not going to be – even Dez has said that. Dez could play big slot, but then, okay, what's the point? You can put Tony Pollard on the field. You can put in a, frankly, better receiver threat right now and said Wilson because Dez worked out for the Ravens. They need receivers more than the Cowboys do, and they didn't sign him. So it doesn't really make sense. So, look, if you get thin at receiver, sure, you, you can explore Dez. He's not going to be active on this team right now. He doesn't really help you at the moment. If you want a new tight end, I'm all for it. Dez is not the solution to your tight end role. So get your votes in. Why for yes and for no? I say no right now. Mr. Stegosaurus, thank you for the super chat. A lot of those today. You love to see it, guys. Thank you all so much. Uh, are you worried Awuzie is a three, maybe a four? I am worried he is a three. I don't. I, he's not a four. He's better than that. He might be a two. Maybe he's not a one based on what we've seen so far in his NFL career. My issue is that the Cowboys don't have an actual one right now. They got some maybe twos, a bunch of threes, and some fours, but I don't think that he's a four. I think he might be a three, probably a two based on what I saw week one, but he's not your number one, and that's the issue. 
Nick McLean, Zeke at tight end at times, and Pollard as running back. So you can use them both, and you can almost use Zeke as like an H-back, but you're never ever, and you shouldn't, put Zeke in line at tight end. That's, that's not going to go very well for you. Put them both on the field, I am in. I hope we see 20 personnel, that's two backs and three receivers, on the field. Run the triple option with Zeke and Pollard. That's fun, man. But tight end, not exactly. From King J, did special teams look better to you? Um, I mean, they were better, but they went from, like, bottom three, if not last in the NFL, to, like, bottom ten. They still were not good enough. Uh, use Crawford more, or why didn't we use Crawford more, and where was Everson Griffin last game? They, they used Crawford. He and Griffin played, I think, about 50% of the snaps, I, I believe is the numbers that, that we had. Um, I thought Everson Griffin just didn't play well. Um, he wasn't good week one. That's only one game. Uh, Crawford's going to be utilized as a, a three technique on rundowns, wrote a pass rushing guy as well. I thought Crawford's usage could have been a little bit higher, but they just didn't make very many plays. Signed snacks to stop the run? Sure. Dontari Poe and Antoine Woods didn't do a great job of it. I, I would love to get snacks on this team. We'll see if the Cowboys feel the same way. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.